have to disappear. Because they're dead. Hey, hi, hello team. My name is Monique. Just in case you were not aware, this is Book Witch Reviews, where I will actually do yet another review. And I'm wearing another shirt with skeletons on it. So you should all know what's coming. It's a special day. It's a... Uh, Ode to a beautiful book day. I recently did a review for the first book in this series and now obviously we are going to do a review for the second because I love this book so much. Is this one. This is Harrow the Ninth, my beautiful bone baby. You may have heard me mention it. You may be tired of hearing me mention it. It's not gonna go away. I'm sorry. But in case you have not yet read the uh, first book in the Locked Tomb series, which is Gideon the Ninth, which I have already made a review for. You can watch it. I will link it down below. But I would suggest that you read that book first, watch that review, and then I would say, come read this one or come watch this video. Well, you should read this book first and then watch this. But there will not be spoilers for Herod the Ninth, but there may be spoilers for Gideon, as I cannot really speak about the sequel in a series without really maybe ruining some of the first book and I don't want to ruin this for you because it's this is my beautiful bone baby and you all deserve the very best so if you are here you have felt the calling in your bones you have either just been snuck in by the beautiful cover or perhaps my thumbnail you know you don't know it could happen or Perhaps you're just here to hear my thoughts on Hero the Ninth. And as always, this will be an incoherent mumble slash babble slash possibly some screaming. But I'll try my very best to have it vaguely review wise. And then we can all just soak in the goodness that is this book. But let us not dally. Let's talk about my favorite book of 2020 so far. It is a stunning sci-fi sequel to Gideon the Ninth. And this book is a niche book. I know it. You know it. Tamsin Muir know it. The publishers know it. This is a book that is in the right time at the right place with the right mindset sort of book. It is a book that if you loved Gideon, you might not love Harrow. However, if you didn't love Gideon, you might love Harrow more because the fact that this is a action-packed, fast-paced, sci-fi, weird necromancer, bone-loving book is about where the similarities end from Gideon to Harrow. Basically, in Gideon, we obviously follow a, a cavalier, a swordswoman, a raging slight lunatic who we love with all of our hearts. From a third person view, it is very direct. Well, this one, we do not quite go that way. This book has second point of view and third point of view. The majority of the book is in second person. It is almost like we get an additional narrator and then we have these odd flashbacks slash memories from Harrow's perspective in the third person that you don't quite understand. But at the same time, you do understand vaguely what's going on when you have read Gideon the Ninth. This book, however, does also explore the universe of Gideon the Ninth slightly more. It explains some things that were not explained very well. Not that there are many things that are explained very well in this book. It's sort of one of those where you just have to power through because you love the characters so much. It is very character driven. It is plot heavy, but not a plot that is immediately like made aware to you. It's not like it's like, here's the plot. You could just run with it. It's more like you accidentally pick the plot up when you throw bones over your shoulders and sort of dig through bone dust and stuff that's the sort of feeling that you get from this book in this book we follow a pivotal character from Gideon the Ninth whose name is Hera Hulk Nuna Cassimius. she is the heir to the Ninth House Throne she is a whipper smart necromancer who literally has just lost everything. She came to become a litter and she lost her cavalier and now she has an angry sword on her back and she has lost her mind. We, this book is literally said immediately after the events of Gideon the Ninth, the fight, the feelings, the feelings will not go away and we basically are thrown into Harrow's uh, mind and this setting is just slightly less necromance fantasy as Gideon is and slightly more intense spaceships and ancient monsters. 
But basically, Harrow and Yante have become lictors, and then we immediately meet Guard. And Guard is the sort of character that I wish that I could write. Guard is the sort of character that I am just like incredibly interested by. We get a vague somewhat vague description of how the ninth houses have come to be but that's about it there are some things that become clearer as so so the thanergy and the like inner workings of necromancy but there are also a lot of things that are still not explained to us so this is still a messy book this is still a book that is very purposely fully purposefully this is a book that is on purpose messy it like Tamsin Muir did not do this by accident. This is bone mess as its finest, but that's what it is. It's a fucking mess, and I love it with my whole goddamn heart. Okay, so though part of the world is better explained in Harrow, we still get a bunch of more mind melting information about the world that is not really clear and is not made clear i can hope that the third book sort of helps us along so we understand a little bit more we also continue our crazy phrase of pop culture references which i adore there is the possibly best dad joke i have ever heard in this book there is also I like namings for ancient uh, important cultures which is basically just a part of a rap and it's it's hilarious it's funny it's a little bit jarring that you keep going from being like deep space almost fantasy necromancy to llamas in hats that's all I will say but basically this book gives you a deep insight into the mind of Hera Hawk, her growing up, her mind and the mind that she is very much losing throughout this book. She is a completely unreliable narrator but we get to know her and we get to know the second person who is narrating and then we get sort of a deeper insight into the world at large and God and the other lictors. So though we are like introduced to new characters we are also introduced to old characters and then Tamsin Muir rips them from us because she can do as she wants even though it hurts us immensely. <laughs> In a lot of ways this book is a complete opposite to Gideon. Gideon is a straight linear well as linear as you can get sort of plot device with a character who runs straight ahead into danger where Harrowhawk this book goes from A to Z to C to J and then moves everything around so the alphabet does not actually have to be in the alphabetical order. It can just do whatever it wants and so does Hero. It sort of just does its own thing but the pacing and the characterization, which were parts that I loved the most about Gideon is very much still apparent in this book but they are sort of polar opposites. Basically to say that I love this book is a bit of an understatement. I I am deeply in lost and um, like obsessed about this book and the way that it has been written and I have never written anything quite like it and I am aware of the fact that this is not going to be everyone's cup of tea I want it to be I want you all to love this as much as I love it but I'm also aware of the fact that this book is a mindfuck it's just gonna mess you up not just your feelings not just your imaginary feelings for your fictional characters but actually it's just messy it's just weird it's heartbreaking and it hurts you on purpose and that is something i will accept but this book has everything it has action it has death magic it has space it has almost friends to something other than friends and then it has a weirdly sexual creation of an arm like there's some things in here where you're like, what the fuck, Tamsin Muir? But then at the same time, you're like, that was so smart. That was like, so smart. But also, you're hurting me, so please stop. This book will rip your heart out and make you eat it. And if that isn't a compliment, then I don't know what is. I would highly recommend this book to anyone who is into the deep sci-fi, who is into death magic, and who is into books that just don't go like a regular line. It goes up here and up here and down here and and like you want to be confused because hopefully at one point you find some of the like little puzzle pieces and they will click together and you'll have the aha moment and that's how i felt throughout this entire book so yes i would highly 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 recommend it i also understand that it might not be for you but i hope that you still enjoyed this incoherent mumble and
take care of yourself hope you are enjoying this if you did hit that thumbs up button hit the subscribe button at the same time so you don't miss out on any other videos from me you can also click the little bell it would say ding whenever i put up a new video which is often will there be mentions of the bone babies more than likely because i love them and then i will see you guys really soon with another video please pick up hair the night right after gideon so you can all enjoy the mess that she has made of my heart all right goodbye this is a book that is very purposely, I can't say that word.